Tonight, from Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin, it's time for Monday Night Football on EA Sports. We'll see Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers taking on Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. There's a look at one of the most iconic sports venues in the lower 48, built back in 1957 under the title of City Stadium. We are at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We all know this community lives for its Packers, and the green and gold came out of the tunnel a short time ago, and it was loud. We are ready for football. So are they as the Packers get set to match up with the Atlanta Falcons. From up top, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles Davis, as always, with me as well. And CD, defenses better be on their toes in this one because we got two quarterbacks who love to throw the football, and they throw it very well. Over 4,000 yards each in the previous season. So what you're saying is, if you're a defender, hope you prepare properly. Hydrated, stretched, be on your toes, as you said, because the ball's coming your way. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Time to see the offense for Green Bay go to work. Aaron Rodgers leading them. What a career it's been. Came into the league back in 2005 as the number 24 pick out of Cal. A lot of people thought the Packers might struggle a bit in 2019, but that was not the case. 13 wins, a trip to the NFC Championship game, and they were led by their quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, who led their team to a Super Bowl title after the 2010 season. And many thought that was the first of what would be many more. So precise with the football. 26 touchdown passes last year and just four interceptions. He knows how to get it downfield and still take care of it as well. Off the play fake to Jones. Here's Rodgers. Steps away to his left. He'll run it. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, it's Rodgers. That's complete to the former Aggie, Jay Sternberger. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points score gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. They got two of the three they needed there. Leaves them with third and just a yard. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And Jones is not going to have the first down as they stop him short. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, there's nothing but room to run. On fourth down, here's Green Bay's third-year punter, J.K. Scott. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. Matt Ryan, the longtime Falcon, a veteran who's been in the league since 08, ready to guide this Atlanta offense. And it's funny how we always talk about how analytics are starting to creep into the game. One analytic that's been there for a long time, 
teams that start 0-3 usually don't make the playoffs. So we know one quarterback today that's determined to end that slide right now. It's not impossible, but this is a must win for him and his team. This pass into the hands of the running back, Todd Gurley. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. No gain, and it's second down. We're scoreless after one. Escaping the pressure right. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Intended target on that one, Russell Gage. And it's third down. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. From the gun, it's Ryan. And Jones has it over the middle. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. On fourth down, the Falcons trot out the rookie punter from Syracuse, Sterling Hoffrichter, as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. So a change of possession here on the punt, and it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. Rodgers now on first down toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's J.K. Scott now as he'll kick it away for the second time. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Very good starting field position for the Falcons' offense as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Looking downfield for Jones. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. To throw again. Ryan eluding the pressure right. Going right back to Jones. This time the connection made. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 22 yards there. A first down. The left side completion to Jones. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. Throwing now. Ryan on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. That is caught inside the five. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. That one goes for 24 yards. Julio Jones has averaged 90 receiving yards per game every season since 2013. And when you factor in that every game plan calls for them double and triple covering him, yet he's still putting up those kind of numbers, that tells you the excellence of Julio Jones. From the two, here's first and goal. Ryan will throw again. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Kevin King with a pick. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points no matter what. At worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. They'll keep it on the ground again here. 
And he'll push forward here for a good little run as the clock continues to run. And now they'll take a timeout defensively. After the second down play, they burn the timeout, making him sweat out the final few ticks here in the second quarter. Once again, they'll keep it on the ground. And they will get to him behind the line, but the clock continues to tick down. So we've hit halftime. All right, folks, eager to get back to this week four matchup. We won't put up a fight. So no scoring in our first half. What will the second half bring as we are now back underway? Fielded in the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. And we thought this game had the potential to be tight. Maybe not this tight. Scoreless as we start the third quarter. And I love the way you use He's got a man complete. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Falcons. Julio Jones. His first touchdown on the year. As his guys are on the board first here tonight. One play, 80 yards. Pretty easy drive to recap. <laughs> it certainly is, but not so easy to execute. Starting on your own 20, you want something to kickstart your drive and get it off to a nice start. They went for the whole thing and got it. That's a great way to send a message to the opposing team. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. It's good, and that gives the Falcons a 7-0 lead. And this is ridiculous. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. Right after the touchdown to extend their lead, now maybe opening the door a little bit there by allowing starting field position at the 40. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. And this is caught. Mercedes Lewis with a grab. And he's brought down after a very nice game. A well-executed 22-yard game. Now a first down carry by Jones. And down to the 44, five yards that time. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. From the gun on third down, Rodgers. He's got his man, Valdez Scantling. Nine yards that time. Really? Really? Did we just see that? That's a big catch. One-handed, I might add, to pick up a first down. I was going to say, on third down for the defense, it's one thing to give up a reception. You just kind of shake your head on a one-handed catch to pick up the first. 13 yards, first down, Packers. First down, it's Jones, and he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. To throw on second and six, Rodgers, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Defensively, you said coming in earlier in the broadcast, the magic number was 20 points for you. That's what you thought they would have to hold this offense to or, or less than that. And, wow, they've done that in a big way, haven't they? Not only have they done it, they put themselves in a great position to win this one because holding them down was paramount. If they could get it done, well, guess what? We see the end result. Right now, they have their eye on victory. And leading here in the fourth. Seven yards to pick up there. Second and three with the ball sitting on the five. 
They'll run it with Jones. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third. Touchdown, Packers! Mercedes Lewis, his second touchdown on the season, and the Packers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch tomorrow. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Here's Powell on the return. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They, of course, tie game, would like to avoid overtime if they could. And a lot of people would go ahead and play it safe here and get to overtime and try and win it there. But, you know, sitting up here in the booth. Take some gambles. I say let's go for this thing, try and push it, and maybe catch the defense back on their heels a bit. See if they do that. Ryan to throw. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Here's Ryan. Flush to his right. Incomplete. He had his hands on it but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Well, he certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A good return there, 17 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. So good field position for the Packers as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. He'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. To throw is Rodgers. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. He'll get this to Lazard. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Now they get the timeout. It leads you to wonder, will they kick it here or risk running another play and possibly not getting down in time? We'll see. And the 13-year man puts it through. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. So it's not quite over yet, but you have to figure they pretty well got this one on ice now. And Brandon, I'm trying to figure out how they remain so calm in these situations and then go out and execute because I'm up here shaking like a leaf and I wasn't the one who had to make that kick. They look calm, but I bet if you had a heart rate monitor on them, <laughs> they'd be up in the 300s right now. <laughs> About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Well, this is just an exercise in futility. Do, do you even bother running a play here offensively? I wouldn't because now is not going to erase what's happened during the game. 
So after it's over, you're going to go to the... And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Kevin King with a pick. And that is going to seal this victory as time runs out. Well, we were on hand for a fun and entertaining game here. Coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to take it. And they came up with the interception and sealed their victory. So for the Packers, hey, they finish a perfect month of September as they move to 4-0 and on the new campaign. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for the Falcons, they'll sink now to 0-4. And, and they'll be back home next week as they're set to take on the Carolina Panthers. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.